Well, hi, everybody. I'm Katie. As I said, I'm the founder of the Coalition to Fight Factory Farming. And I'm going to get started. <clears throat> so how many of you sang Old McDonald's when you were kids? Pretty much everybody, right? So when you go to the grocery store and you look around at products, the pictures on them would make it seem like Old McDonald's is still what's used today. You see these rolling green hills, all these happy animals outside. Um, but as some of you probably know, and as all of you will definitely know by the end of this presentation, that's not what farming is actually like anymore. Um, so I'm here to talk about the method that's used to produce 99% of animal products in this country today, and that's factory farming. So a quick overview of the presentation, I'm going to go over the basics of factory farming, um, an overview of the different industries, workers' rights, environmental impacts, and public health. Um, just so you guys don't have to worry, there aren't any gory pictures, no blood, you don't have to worry about that. Um, there are cuteness interludes after each section, um, and that'll be question time. So if you have a question, just keep it in mind. Every like five or ten minutes, we'll have time for questions. All right, so rather than all McDonald's, this is what we have today. Um, as I said before, 99% of all animal products used to produce um, milk and eggs, or used for um, animals eaten or used to produce milk and eggs in the U.S. are factory farmed. Um, so what is factory farming exactly? Technically known as concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, factory farming is the practice of confining animals indoors at high densities to produce the highest amount of product for the lowest possible cost. So here you see egg, beef, uh, pork, and chicken factory farms. Factory farming began in the 1920s with the invention of vitamin supplements. This allowed animals to be raised indoors with supplements, like vitamin D, rather than outside, as humans had always done. The basic idea for factory farming came from the Ford model of industrialization and specialization. Different types of machines and antibiotics have allowed for the growth of factory farming. So light and air filtration systems ensure that animals never need to see the light of day or breathe fresh air, and antibiotics ensure that no matter how unsanitary the conditions, the animals won't die off in large numbers. Family farmers have also become a thing of the past thanks to factory farms. More than half a million hog farmers have gone out of business in the past 25 years alone. Four companies now control a majority of cow, pig, and chicken production. And a lot of the same companies also control um, the raising and the processing of the animals, so they have horizontal as well as vertical control of the industry. And two companies own three quarters of all of the genetics for broiler chickens, which are chickens raised for meat, in the entire world. Um, so as you can see, factory farming is really run entirely by corporations. Um, the only jobs produced by factory farms are either bureaucratic desk jobs or unskilled, dangerous, and poorly paying jobs. So there aren't any farmers on factory farms. So there's one huge advantage to factory farming, and that's cheap food. In the past 50 years, the average cost of a new house has increased nearly 1,500%, a new car 1,400%, but um, milk is up only 350%, and eggs and chicken meat haven't even doubled in price in that time. So there's some basic numbers for you. Um, every year in the United States alone, 10 billion land animals are raised and killed for meat, eggs, and milk. Um, and as you can see, the vast majority of those animals are factory farmed. Also, the average American eats the equivalent of 21,000 entire animals in his or her lifetime. Okay, so now I'm going to talk briefly about what life is like for these 10 billion land animals. Um, I'm going to go through a brief overview of the different industries. So I'm going to start with layer hens. Layer hens are the chickens used to produce eggs. They're genetically distinct from broiler chickens, which are the chickens raised for meat. Um, layer hens have been bred to produce as many eggs as possible, while broiler chickens, uh, chickens raised for meat, have been bred to grow as big as possible, as fast as possible. So I'm going to start from the beginning of their life cycle. When female chicks are born, they have their beaks cut off without anesthetic. This is a process called deep beaking. Um, in normal conditions, chickens develop a peaceful hierarchy. You guys have probably heard of a pecking order. Um, but when they're kept in confinement, they don't have enough space to develop those um, social conditions, and so they often express their stress by um, pecking at or even cannibalizing other birds. So um, the farmers will preemptively cut off their beaks in order to prevent injury. And one theme that you'll see throughout this presentation is that the unnatural conditions of factory farming often create these problems that necessitate even more unnatural solutions. And deep beaking is a good example of that. Um, chicken's beaks are their primary means of sensor, sensory exploration, so this is really debilitating as well as painful. As soon as the females mature, they're put into cages and barns. The typical cage for an egg-laying hen allows for 67 square inches of floor space, which is smaller than a sheet of paper. The cages are then stacked between three to nine tiers high in these barns, as you can see here. Um, chickens now lay 300 eggs per year, which is three times what they no normally would in nature. They're killed after that one year because their bodies begin to give out from the stressful conditions. And the industry has actually discovered that it's cheaper to slaughter all the birds after like one or two years and start over with fresh ones, rather than pay for um, feed and housing for birds that are sicker and producing fewer eggs. 
Um, so this is a typical life for 97% of egg-laying hens in this country, according to widely published industry standards. Some of the layer hen eggs are fertilized in order to produce the next generation of laying hens, um, but obviously only female chickens produce eggs, and the male chicks of egg-laying hens haven't been bred to produce meat, so what to do with them? All male layers, which is half of all the layer chickens born in the United States, more than 250 million per year, are literally discarded. Um, so they're often thrown into dumpsters, which is what you see here, um, where they're crushed or suffocated or die of starvation, or that sometimes they're tossed into wood chippers. Um, so this is one byproduct of the egg industry that not very many people know about. Um, and the general theme throughout this presentation, the, re the whole reason for factory farming is money. Um, so like these male hens are, th are thrown out because they're, um, they're not valuable. And the whole reason for factory farming is just like saving every penny possible to maximize profit. So now I'm going to talk briefly about broiler chickens, which are the chickens raised for meat. Um, they have a slightly better life, actually, than chickens raised for eggs because they're kept in barns by thousands rather than in individual cages. So they have, on average, a single square foot of space. Um, and as I said before, broiler chickens have been bred to produce as much flesh as possible as fast as possible. So from 1935 to 1995, the average daily growth rate has, it has increased roughly 400%. In the wild, chickens' life expectancy was 15 to 20 years before they were genetically engineered, and on factory farms, they're slaughtered at around six weeks old. So this unnaturally fast growth places a lot of stress on chickens' bodies. Um, they didn't evolve to grow that big or that quickly. So according to an article in Feedstuffs, which is an agribusiness journal, broilers now grow so rapidly that the heart and lungs are not developed well enough to support the remainder of the body, resulting in congestive heart failure and tremendous death losses. 26% of broiler chickens are severely crippled, and 90% cannot walk normally. So when chickens, and this is both egg-laying and broiler chickens, since egg-laying chickens are sent to the same slaughterhouses as meat chickens, um, when they're sent off to slaughter, they're loaded into crates on trucks, like you see here. According to expected rates, a single worker should create 105 chickens in 3.5 minutes. So obviously, if the workers are working that fast, they can't be really careful. Um, so they're just grabbing the birds by their legs and throwing them into these trucks. Um, so approximately 30% of all live birds arriving at the slaughterhouse have freshly broken bones. So once they're placed in these crates, they're then shipped without food or water to plants hundreds of miles away, and they travel regardless of weather conditions. Legally, animals can be shipped for up to 26 hours before being given food and water. And they travel, you know, whether it's freezing outside or 105 degrees, they're shipped in these open-air crates. So then once they arrive at the plant, um, the workers sling the birds to hang upside down by their ankles and metal shackles on a moving conveyor system. Um, more of their bones will be broken in that process, and you can imagine how painful it would be to be slung up by your broken legs. Other countries, including all of the European Union, require that chickens be rendered unconscious or killed prior to bleeding or scalding. But in America, chickens and turkeys are actually exempt from the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, which is basically the only animal welfare legislation that even applies to farm animals in the first place. Um, and that states that animals should be unconscious prior to slaughter in order to ensure a quick and relatively painless death. Um, but this doesn't apply to chickens or to turkeys, which are the most commonly slaughtered animals in this country. And this is something to keep in mind before Thanksgiving when tons of people are eating turkey. Um, so the, the chickens are put through an electrical bath. Um, to, that stuns them and it paralyzes them, so they don't like flap around and mess up the machinery. Um, but the voltage is kept too low to actually render them unconscious. Um, so then they're put through an automated throat slitter, which um, slits their major arteries, and that's what kills them. Um, unless they miss the relevant arteries, which happens all the time, according to a slaughterhouse worker. Um, the birds are then put through a scalding tank of boiling hot water and their feathers are removed. According to the National Chicken Council, 180 million chickens are improperly slaughtered each year, and you have to assume that's a really conservative estimate since it's coming from the industry itself. Government estimates state that 4 million birds are alive and conscious when they go into the scalding tank, where they're then boiled alive. And again, this is merely the typical methods of production. Like if you look at agribusiness journals, this is what you'll see. I'm not going to talk about worker abuse today, um, probably because I don't have time and probably because it's too gory. Um, but it is really common because of the inherently violent and stressful working conditions. Um, the workers often take out their stress on the animals. So just to reiterate, so far I've covered the chicken industries, both meat and eggs. Um, and again, this is the norm for 99% of chickens in this country. So, you know, even if you only buy cage-free eggs or free-range chicken, the slaughtering methods are still exactly the same. And any time that you eat chicken or products made with eggs in a restaurant, it's 99% guaranteed that they came from a factory farm with these conditions. Okay, so I'm going to talk quickly about free-range. To be considered free-range, chickens raised for meat must have access to the outdoors with no actual space specifications. 
So a shed with 30,000 chickens and a small door on one end that opens onto a tiny dirt patch can count as free range. Um, the USDA actually doesn't even have a definition of free range for laying hens. They rely on producer testimonials. Um, so this is a picture of a farm that's, um, that's cage-free. And it's true, you know, the chickens aren't in cages, but it's not what most people imagine when they see, like, cage-free, humane, with, like, pictures of rolling green fields and things like that. Um, so there are egg farms in this area that actually do keep their hens outdoors and in reasonable conditions, um, but you have to do some pretty thorough research and find third-party certified um, free-range or humane. Um, and unless you do that research, you can pretty well assume that most free-range or cage-free eggs um, are crammed thousands to a barn, debeaked, drugged, and slaughtered when spent.